this is your first <coughs> complete one-man show at this location, right? Yes, yes it is. It's a, um, at Under the Bridge. Now, this is, well, this is a venture of Under the Bridge Studios, and uh, a lot of my friends, believe it or not, have been asking me for quite a while, you know, why, why don't you do a one-man show, do a one-man show? But I, for some strange reason, I've always, I always hesitated, because I'm always, so used to doing group shows. But what, what happened new is that I've been talking to my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, Juanita Lopez, about a lot of things that are going on in the community and in the house and stuff like that. So she came up with an idea. She said, you know what, I'm going to help you out. She's a business person. I love it. <laughs> and what's interesting about what happened is, is her mind thinks completely different. I love it. Because right away she said, we're going to do this, 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 and talked me into putting together this show. Now, little did I know, and just uh, I went to my studio, started looking, picked out things from the 70s, 80s, you know, bringing up the date. There's only 120 pieces of artwork. I did not even dent what I have in my collection at all. Not even, not even. I didn't realize I had that much work. So that was two things that surprised me that I was able to get that I have that much work, and then to bring here these pieces of work, 120 pieces. So there are 120 pieces here. There's 120. Actually, there's 120 paintings plus sculpture. Okay. So what you're seeing right now here in the entrance of the of the show is some of the my the newest works that I've been working with. And what's different about what I'm doing here is the colors that I'm using in this particular uh, uh, group of paintings here. Now, my paintings for a long time have been kind of a, a study of the neighborhood, what goes on in the community. Now these ones, these paintings right here, I'm just having fun. I'm having a lot of fun with them. Like this one here in particular, uh, that's kind of my um, uh, showcase because it was on the, 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 the thing, which is this one right here. I have a lot of compliments on this piece right here. So, it's uh, made out of soy, three-dimensional, uh, painted in grays. I mean, I really, I had a really good time painting um, this series. The series, the whole series, maybe is about maybe four or five paintings. This yeah. one. Um, this oh. one that you were talking about, Roman. Do you are you carving a bigger, a thicker surface to begin with to get this raised effect? Yeah. Well, actually, yes. But, but what you're doing is you go down. In other words, in, in some cases you work up, but in this case. You go to the level where it's at and just work your way down. So in other words, this is the highest point, and you cut and then you take it down. To, so this painting is somewhat of a sculpture as well. Exactly, a relief. Okay. This one right here is also kind of an old nostalgic one because we're doing a lot of um, of the old days, and this is basically a, a family from the early '60s. That's why you have the the the, the Royal Knights, which used to be a, a, a social club. I wouldn't say it's a gang. They were called social clubs in those days. That basically this used to be an 89th commercial, but this was a typical family. Now this is the families that raised the children that are that are, are now raising their grandchildren in this community, which is an interesting community to, you know that we're from because a lot of people stayed here. Like we have like five, six generations of people here. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And this is right here and in front of me is some of um, what they call in Spanish uh, white limestone, or I, I used to call it caliche. This is some alabaster piece. Just a quick sample of um, of that. Okay, we're gonna be we're gonna swim around. Again, this is like uh, what you're seeing here. Very briefly, is I, I play around with different techniques, different color. I'm always experimenting. Uh, that's the fun of being an uh, uh, an urban artist and an outside artist. You you discover things by yourself. A lot of times, when you're in a classroom, it kind of helps uh, reach some of these these things by by as a group. But as an outside artist, you discover things by yourself, so that's why you're always, that's, well, me in particular, I'm always experimenting with colors and different techniques. So here's three simple colors, but they all have their own way different from each other. I come, I'm always having fun experimenting. Um, this one right here in front of us, which is interesting because I opened my door to my studio and somebody had torn down a, a billboard. Most of this stuff had rolled into my, this corner of my the, the door right here, so I came and I picked everything up and it was going to the garbage until I said, wait a minute, this looks kind of interesting. And I decided that this would be an interesting uh, start to a painting. So what I did is I glued everything together like this. And then once everything was glued, I started adding color and paint, paint to them. So it was interesting that, uh, that you could stuff, literally work with anything, literally. What you see here, again, is a sample of that style because what you see here is I, ha I just got through doing a commission of a, of a steel worker, 16 feet made out of the foam, and then it was converted into uh, bronze. 
So I have stacks and stacks of this material here that's not doing anything. So I have to figure something out with the waste. So this was my uh, way of dealing with it. So I would grab the small piece and I would glue them together and make small shapes and this and that. And just glue everything together and then coat them with a piece of uh, plaster. You say, are these, you mentioned the foam from the steelworker set. Is that some of the foam from the yes. steelworker set? Yes. So we have seen it in both forms. When we got, when you were at Cal Park working on the foam and at your studio. Exactly. Now we're seeing it here in this form. Yeah. A total Fantastic. recycle because I'm constantly recycle, recycle, recycle. Yes. And, but you're having fun with it. The whole thing is that why I'm doing this is always fun because you think of what I can possibly do with this. Now, what I did a little bit different here is I, another fellow artist but from the Kisa crew named uh, Omar Marin, but goes by the name of uh, uh, Ohms. So I was together with him that one day, and he said, you know what, you know, let's, could I work with you with this next? Sure, you know what, why don't you paint it? So he grabbed his spray cans and started spraying and with me and him like this, and this is how we collaborated together with these colors, you know. And I, I had a lot of fun working with him. I said, I would like to do this again in a larger scale, so... You, we probably will be doing something like this in, in a big one. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, this grouping of paintings here in this area right here is kind of interesting because this was just a study on the grid. Grid is mathematical where you divide your your canvases up into halves, quarters, sixteenths. In my case, I like using eighths. So what I actually did is I took the same figures and I used different lengths of wood and canvas and just added the grid and just started working with these figures. I was having a lot of fun. It was like a study, but this study I was more than, I really enjoyed doing it. I really enjoyed doing this series. I had a lot of fun with it because the grid works even for sculptors. You know, uh, mathematics plays a part in everything. Like you could take anything from a small scale, put the grid on it, and you could do it 20 feet tall. You know, it's just math. It's funny because I had a class a few times here in, uh, in the community, and my God, trying to explain 16ths, it's very difficult. So I said, you know what? Let's work a different way. Fold the paper. Let's fold the paper eight times. And then I finally showed him. But it's not the easiest thing to learn. But once you learn it, it's the most easiest tool you'll ever have. You can work with it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And then here, it's different. Um, again, different styles that I'm working with. Different uh, ideas. Uh, like this particular one up there. I did a whole series of these. And they're all nothing but waiting on the bus stop. And they're all based on me, because I'm, I'm more of a bus rider than... It's, it's funny about me, because I all my brothers and my everybody in my family all had cars when they were younger, teenagers, all had cars. I rode the bus. I've never seen you drive. Well, I actually have a driver's license. I actually have a driver's license and everything. But for some reason, it just never was important to me. And I've always been uh, a passenger. You were pointing out one of the pieces here, and I was setting up the camera, so... Well, this, like this is that series I was talking about. I do everything in series. Like of, of those bus stop series, I must have about I must have about maybe five or oh. six of them. Okay, I get it. I just recently gave one to a cousin of mine that came to visit from Corpus, and he was overwhelmed with the work and he couldn't pick anything. I said, you know what? Take a winter one. You know, take a winter one to Texas. And so he kind of had a little chuckle on that, but he had one of that that series. And then I'll do single images. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always practicing, practicing, practicing. An interesting character now that is part of my new works is Death. He peeks around the corner. And I'm also using the clock to symbolize something very simple, 350. And the only thing 350 represents to me is I was born 350. So I'm using real simple symbolisms in my works to represent odd things about myself. Okay. Now this series, oh, this is an important one. This was, this was done, uh, I, it's in my possession because it was traveling through different schools and right now it's getting ready to be moved again. This actually belongs to South Chicago purchased by uh, the ex-Alderman Pope and his committees and gave this to South Chicago. And it's been traveling through quite a few of the schools here in the community. By right, it should be somewhere right now. So we're kind of like working on that right now. But this was a piece I did on a tragedy that happened maybe five, six years ago on 87th and Exchange. A little girl and his sister was, well, her sister was gunned down and she was blind and all that. But what makes it interesting is when I got together with the school, we had a poetry uh, contest and like this. And this young man won the, the thing, so I took his paint, his poem, 
and inlaid it into the stone, which is basically a young man's interpretation on what it is to live in a community such as ours when you're not allowed to grow up and be a young person because there's so much tragedy and death that these young people are afraid to go to the store. They can't live a normal uh, child that we used to run around the streets and play games. They don't play games no more. I mean, uh, we used to run around the streets so late at night playing release and hide and seek. That doesn't happen no more. Uh, now, now these up here is a, a series of works that I was doing with, again, that soy. And these are just like different studies that I was doing with it. But I enjoy playing with color. That's why in this particular one I use this, I just went a little bit off on the, on the, on the colors. The soy holds up pretty well outdoors too, doesn't it? Yes. As long as you have the right coating, it'll hold up. But I wouldn't suggest it. You know, I really wouldn't. Unless it was really necessary, then we would have to really uh, protect it. But it would be safer to be an indoor piece, you know. The soy itself you were talking about using as a mounting also on the ore walls, weren't you? Not yes. necessarily the work of art itself, but as a mounting? Well, the, the, one of the ideas that we have with the ore walls is kind of like what around Rush, Mount Rushmore. Something of that effects. Or Sitting Bull in the Dakotas right. to that level where we, you, we would use the stones that are there to, and the height that they have. The Stone Mountain but, in Georgia, too. But what I want to do is I want to keep the purity of the stone. So in other words, when we do it, instead of painting them like this, they'll be turned back into the ore walls. So they'll be the color of the ore walls, the rust color, the dirt, the brown, the tones. So it would really look like it was always a part of the wall. But right now, things are changing rapidly. So we really don't know who right now at this point to approach about this particular project. But it's a winner. I mean, this project, I think, would be one of the top ones. But if by some hands it has to change hands, well, it just disappears. I mean, there's really nothing just to get to that level. That's what we want to. This 10th Ward sculpture that you mentioned before, I had a question about it in the sense that I know that many times you use recycled material for your sculptures as well. Was this one of those instances? Well, no, they, well this particular stone here uh, came, you know, I got it from... Uh, uh, I was working with uh, uh, Sarah Ward's, um, uh, at that time it was called um, Sashkal Arts. Right. Now it's called Sky Art. But no, I was working with one of her class and that's how I got, I got a hold of this stone. We, were, we bought a, a, this a was ton a, of it. This was a fresh stone. Yeah, what, fresh okay. stone, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. And, uh, and like I said, then, like, now, like, th these over here, like I said, is the, the soy. This one right here, the, this Peeps of Marble, is really interesting because uh, somebody was tearing down the commercial theater uh, got these particular stones from the men's bathroom. I had four of them. And this is the last of that stone that I carved during that period because they were, uh, the, the, the first two were very popular. I sold them, I think, the, the first week that I made them. Or they went out, they were gone. I gave one to my uh, niece for, because it was more of a tribute to my brother who had passed, and this one here. And this is actually uh, 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 the walls that were once part of South Chicago commercial theater, but they just happened to be in the bathroom. You know, that's the only it was a classy bathroom. Yeah, oh, right? well, it was a beautiful bathroom. Yeah. I remember it still, as a, even that far back. Uh, that was where all the parents used to chase their kids to on Sundays for the matinees so they could be have some peace. And then the theater would be at our mercy. <laughs> Again, this is another series of uh, different uh, things that I've been working on. Th these are kind of interesting because they all have deaf symbolism behind them. For some strange reason, in that, this, during this period, a lot of what I was doing dealt with this concept of these figures. This one is kind of interesting because this one I use deaf holding human fate mass. So I just kind of was changing things around and playing around with color and ideas. When I first saw that one, I thought it was kind of a reverse take on Dia de los Muertos. That's exactly that's exactly mm -hmm. what um, what I was doing. And and here on the table here is some serpentine, some uh, river rock from uh, Africa. See, my main media for many many years, people who knew me, I was a sculptor. This was the main thing that I showcased for many years. Very few people knew that I even attempted to paint, let alone the caliber that I have, because I never really put it out there. This is like one of the first time. actually this is the first time that a lot of people are actually seeing this work of mine. They're more used to seeing me, Roman Villarreal the sculptor. 
this is another person that has been adding what I was seeing in my community and the different studios that I had and what I would see outside my doors. In this particular case right here, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of gang activity, if you could see. So this particular series deals with that subject. The funniest one to me, or the one to me that makes the most, and only certain people, there's only a handful of people that could actually understand what this is about. This painting is uh, what is, happens really in life. It's, I mean, it's not natural. This is a, a Latin king who fell in love with an SGD, which means basically Spanish gangster disciple. She had a baby from a Latin count. The baby grew up and became a Latin dragon. So here is a, a, a story all within right here. But if you don't know what this represents, what this, you will just look at it and just say, oh wow, just a guy with holding a baby. But no, there's so many things that are in these things that unless you really have experienced or been around this particular lifestyle, you wouldn't even have no idea what's going on. It just I looks when like I first it. looked at it, I thought hippies. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have no, but it's the way this with this with this with this. That's all symbolism. It's funny to me because this is, uh, I did this one I think in the late, early 90s, probably late 80s. I was doing a show on Carpenter called Caixi Sueños and we parked the car on 18th Street and in this little gangway, I heard somebody say, hey, what's up, punk? And I go, what the? I turned around, there was this little kid, had to be no more than, I don't know, maybe five, six years old at the most, dressed like a stone gangbanger and looking tough as you could, as you could be. <laughs> I said, what the heck is this girl coming to? But I never forgot his look, so I just came and I just started to paint these images of him. But it shows where his lifestyle is taking him, nowhere. Mm. Because you see the theft, the gun, the blood. The... But that's the reality of, of gang people. You know? And the... he's whipping gang signs with it, there with his fingers as well, right? Yeah, because that represents Latin King. Okay. And the colors that he's wearing are Latin King colors, which is black and gold. Yeah, so, as you say, you started young. Oh, yeah, this one up here, like, for instance, that's a... This was an... I got a few of these paintings. This, this is an old veteran, which means an old veteran of the wars and period. Like, the, 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 the Guadalupe on his head represents the Cristeros from the 1900s. He's also a, a, a Medal of Honor winner because he has a Purple Heart. But at the same time, he's losing because... The, the handkerchiefs are his dead children. These are kids that have been dying on the street. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, the colors represent. I know sometimes they get a little morbid, but sometimes you can't help it because this neighborhood has suffered so much uh, violence uh, senselessly that you know you have no choice. I mean, if you you're telling you, stories, yeah, it, 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 it has to be part of you because if it ain't, then you can say, well, where the heck you live at, you know? Because uh, now here. It's a sample of uh, uh, introduction to my monument on the lakefront, dedicated to the steel workers. Um, uh, just just this past year, this was this past year. It was really, it was a really really interesting. I was honored to do this. It was one of those. Uh, uh, I never in my million years thought that I would be have the honor of leaving this tribute to the steel workers. And to me, uh, of, of everything that happened during that period, I was just building it. I was the most. I was very happy. I mean, it's good to have a, that period where you're really enjoying what's going on. And this was one of them. I really enjoyed doing that piece. It was very uh, inspiring for me. And it has anchored the park for the community, too. Yes. I go there quite a bit, and I get to see people come in and photograph it in this net, but... It has given it an identity. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. But, uh, but see, what's going on with this park, not to start any um, things going on that's unnecessary, but... The city really doesn't know that this piece exists. We never really, really got the proper uh, way to introduce our park, this sculpture, and things that happened to us to Chicago. You know, one, the weather, uh, and there was a lot of odd things going on that really didn't allow it to get to that level. Because I'm almost positive that a lot of people in the news of Chicago don't know it's here. The newspapers don't really know it's here. The, the magazines don't know it's here. Somehow or another, South Chicago has to be brought out. And how we're going to do this, I still haven't figured it out, but we're really, really trying. And we really feel that South Chicago needs more. And that, that's exactly almost what we're doing here, showing that 
uh, the, the retrospect you see here of my work, it's kind of interesting because it shows that I've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we're here. We're not going anywhere. This is where... I think you are going somewhere, but you're not leaving. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not leaving. That good, good one. Now, this one here is a lot of fun to me. Well, the two of these two paintings here are kind of fun to me because there are four different little paintings, but it's the same woman. You know, you see her... In, in, a, in, a, in a sexual way, you see her in an in a evil way, you see her as a saint, and then you see her as the mother of your children. But it's the same woman, it's the same person. Three flowers, three flowers. And then the other thing is, where do you see something like this? Only if you've ever been in a situation where life took away your freedom, do you realize that that's your space. This is all that belongs to you. That one. Yeah. So that kind of like represents uh and this one that was I had, was having fun uh, with some friends of mine who we were talking about, you know, I some but the main one that we were talking about was the chicken and the egg. What came first, chicken or the egg? <laughs> and this is how this particular painting came about, because I'm messing around with the chicken and the egg and seeds and stuff like that. But I have fun because then I tell everybody, hey, did you see the piece? Yeah, oh yeah, well, this and that. He goes, What did you think of it? Oh, I think it was funny, this and that. He goes, I'll tell you another one. It's a rooster. That's not a chicken. So it wasn't all that was cracked up? <laughs> so instead of the chicken egg, I even put it in words. I said, well, that's not even a chicken. That's the rooster. And these are a couple of my pastel works. And uh, I love painting this particular, uh, just two color themes. And I like painting crowds. For some reason, lately, when I was doing these, I was painting like 20 people, 15 people. I mean, I would just sit there and just one person popped up, another person popped up, and next thing I know, uh, I started doing these party crowd paintings. I must have a good dozen of them of different colors, red ones, grays, purples. And... Uh, Let me get around here. And then this wall right here, like this wall right here, uh, right, right here, this right here, is uh, just quick studies. Like, for instance, um, these lines, I started playing around with just a lions, okay, but but what is the lion doing? So what I, what, when I first did, I think this was the first one I did, when I first did this one, somebody thought that the lions had eaten up the hunters and were messing around with their hookahs. Huh? And I said, no, that belongs to the lions. I was playing around with the, these images. But the more I kept playing around with that idea, I said, well, I'll just, yeah, that's a good one to me. I think, yeah, the lions did eat the hunters. Oh. <laughs> so sometimes they have little stories by themselves. This one up here is my favorite because this one I did, uh, again, the soy. Uh, I just got through doing a religious thing. I did Virgen de Guadalupe for a church. So I took the same colors that I used for that religious painting and created Diego y la Lupe, but in a completely different scene. This is what you, you see her in the church, but this is what they see in the bar. So it's kind of like a... And now this over here... But this, they love each other as sacramental anyways. Yeah. Isn't it? And like these, these paintings here happen again. It's interesting the way life is when you have accidents and they're, they're fun accidents. What I did one day, and I was waiting for Maria, my wife Maria, who's also a fellow painter and artist. I was waiting for her to come pick me up that day. So I had this little drawing print in front of me. So what I did is I just started sketching on it, you know, just playing around. I put Bush, the Bush Nation, I put uh, the skull here, and I put a tattoo on him, and put a necklace inside it. And I realized, wow, this is a lot of fun. So I went from this painting, then I jumped into this painting. And this painting, what I did, what I did is I started changing them, and I became, they became more Mexican. Like, for instance, the mountains are from Monterrey, which is the Sierra de las Sillas. Because these used to, I think they might have been uh, the Matterhorn or somewhere in Switzerland or somewhere. So I just started changing little things, little things you know, with the series. As I recall, this is an original painting that you then modified exactly. to your own theme, yeah. to your own vision. And, and, and kept the other artist's name also. His yeah. name's over there, mine's is over here. And this series is kind of funny because I call this series 3,350 Miles to Bush. <laughs> and basically all that is is 3, 3, 50. That's when I was born, you know, in Bush. So it's kind of uh, me sharing a little of my experience from, um, 
And then to find out, I was just, like I said, we just found out today talking about somebody that the Bush community came from somebody's last name. I didn't even know that. So that's that's gonna be that's fun. This is new down here. I just did this one uh, uh, just last week. I'm really doing. I'm really into making uh, horses right now. See, this is an old. This right here. This one here is. Uh, was that one piece of wood originally? Yes, it's a piece of fur. Actually, this is a study that I was doing because I did, I did an, uh, an office building. And I did these huge pillars. And this was kind of like a model before the job, kind of showing the, the style that I was going to be working with. And this kind of like where I went. I call this piece the Virgin and her sisters. But I made them look African, you know, Ethiopian, you know, kind of a, more of a... And this is the father, son, and the ghost, and that's Adam and Eve. But what I love about art, sometimes you could do things and plan them and they just don't work out. The knots on this wood perfectly fitted in the places that if I were ever going to design it to fit, fit it. And it really was uh, not any different thing on my part. It's just that when I started doing the sketches, everything just fell right into it. Okay. And it wasn't me trying to push it. No, it just... They felt just the way it was supposed to, which is the beauty of this, because the virgin that we have in Mexico was actually pregnant. The Virgin of Guadalupe was actually expecting a child. And what more beautiful thing to have, something to appear here representing, you know, that symbolism without me getting involved. It's like Mother Nature did it. And, and you know what's interesting thing about what, what we're doing here now? If we could figure out how to share what we're doing here with the community, I think that it would benefit every young artist that's coming up there because it would show one thing, the, the, the pride, the respect that the community has for you as an artist. But we have to get to that level. We have to figure out how are we, can we get our community to come and view these pieces. A lot of the people in the community wouldn't even know that a lot of the art events that are happening are, I think, because a lot of them are not recorded, they're not... Uh, documented and if it wasn't for what we've been doing in the last few years this is history that we're doing because mm -hmm. if you can't come out and see the show itself we're taking it to you which is very very important because I, but but then again I want to emphasize there's nothing more beautiful than seeing it yourself in the workplace and the artists need your support we don't need your money we just need the support of the community to say yeah that is our artist because there's so many of us here that we, they don't even know. Uh, it's, we're like hidden treasure in this community. Mm -hmm. I mean, the music that we have here, the music that comes out of South Chicago, the poets, the writers. We have some young politicians that are just starting to, to make their mark in the, in the thing. They're all from our community. These are people that we have to be proud of. There's a lot of things in our community that gives you pride. And this is one of the ones that I wish that we could share more with the community. Because if you could see what we feel and what we see... When we do our works, you can see the pride in what we're doing. And the sadness and the joy. Because like for instance, this painting, this painting right here is an example of what was going on here. Now, there is no reason why I should have ever painted a painting like this with a little girl, a bullet going in that direction. But we have to understand, this is what was happening in our community and we can't let people forget. It might not be one of the paintings I'll ever sell, but it'll be a painting that will never be forgotten because this was the madness that was happening in our community. And the people that paid the price in, in many, many ways, not besides the ones that were killed, the innocent and all that, the ones that went to prison the rest of their lives. I mean, everybody suffers, the mothers, the parents, the grandparents. But this is what was happening in that period in South Chicago. And this is why I started painting a lot of these things that I felt, I said, wow, and I sculpting them. You know, one thing I'm like, oh, let me do this. I mean, you never run out of things to do in such kind of, I mean, there's so many, but at the same time, we have to be positive. Because if you show too much negative, you're going to scare everybody. But So I had to make sure there was an equal balance of both whenever I show my work. Because I want to show beauty, I want to show positive. But at the same time, a lot of things were happening. Like this one here was a... A, a lot of young, young people won't re realize it, but our garbage cans used to be cans. They used to be metal, metal cans, oh, yeah. round cans. Oil this drums. particular... It must have been in the 80s or late 70s, somewhere around there. Well, we got, I got a, oh, man, this, 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 I think his name was Isa or something. I forgot his name offhand. He's, oh, well, such he died. You know, he's, well, we went over there being nosy community, and he died between two garbage cans, huddled like this, froze to death one winter night. Mm -hmm. 
But then again, this is what I was doing during that period. I was painting. Oh, I, I painted murders. Uh, I mean, winos. I mean, the oddest things. Uh, people shooting up drugs and dying on the. I used to call it dying on the throne. That's what I used to call it in the old days. Because there were so many guys that would do drugs and then die on the toilet. Well, I remember years ago I did a show one time at the Field Museum. No, Science Industry during the. Hispanic Festival of the Arts. I don't, they don't have any more, but at one time it was a very, very big affair that used to happen here in Chicago. And I, I'll never forget that one of my first uh, shows that I did, a lady came in with a police officer, and she points to this painting. She said, I want that painting taken down. It's an offense and this and that, and we're all looking at the painting. Well, what it was, it was about abortions. I'm not sure what this brother's name, but I think he might be, it might have been Sal Dominguez, but I might be wrong, but I know it was something Dominguez. But anyways, his paintings were so powerful that it created a reaction, and I realized, wait a minute, it clicked on us. I said, wait a minute, the power of the painting mm -hmm. is just as powerful as the, the writing. What he painted was truth, abortion. They're not pretty, they're not beautiful. Yet his message was so heavy, they wanted him to take him down. Oh, yeah. And I said, wow, that is amazing. Art suffers like that. When ignorant people don't understand what's going on, art will suffer. They will yeah. suffer. Because um, by all rights, this should be, by, by, this goes all the way back to Alderman Buchanan. I remember the first time Alderman Buchanan years ago. It seems like a long time now that I'm starting to sound like a, but anyways, Buchanan, perfect example, John Buchanan. He asked me one time, Roman, what are we going to need in this We need a culture center. That's how far back we've been asking for a cultural center to represent the, what was going on in the arts and keep the arts alive. That's how far back we go. The mistake that I made was one day John Buchanan allowed me to go to Union Hall and I made a, hey Roman, you could talk. Well, I was a little bit different than those years and I told everybody in the audience, you know, we don't need the city, we don't need anybody. If we want a culture center, we got the power to build our own thing because it belongs to our children. This is our culture, you know. This, well, I got disconnected. But it was an interesting message. <laughs> but that's how long we've been trying to get the movement or something to happen in our community. We go all the way back to John Buchanan. I remember when we were working with you and Marge, Maria, and we were working in the building over on Commercial, trying to get the cult, the group running, the arts oh, group going. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that was I needed. Into, that was an interesting building. I, I, I kind of uh, uh, belonged to uh, Tom Cintron, a nice person, real nice. He gave us an opportunity to, to showcase art, but uh, like everything else, things financially and this and that. But uh, but the main thing is that uh, we have to work one way or to keep the art alive because I, I know one thing. If we happen to have a spot on commercial, we could change it. It doesn't happen overnight, but it'll happen with hard work and people support it and it comes through the arts. We could come back and bring at least some spirit back to our community. And our community, I, I mean, when I mean our community, I have to be very clear because it's the east side and South Chicago. I don't see it any more different no more. Like in the old days, I used to say, well, that's the east side, the side. No, this is South Chicago, this is our community. So the best word that I could use instead of dividing is just say, this is our community. Well, I'll give you a perfect example uh, that worked for me, for us, and we've seen it visually that day. Uh, Mark Walden got together with Derek Clemens and Luz, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, I'm sorry. But anyways, these guys put together a fashion show. A fashion show slash music slash art exhibit uh, on the block, on, on 88th and commercial. My God, it was so beautiful to see the community came to life that night. There was people outside, people honking the horn. There was people going shopping at the pizza place, the restaurant. I mean, it felt like South Chicago was supposed to be. How did it happen? Something very, very simple. Collaboration among the artists to show what we have and come join us. That's all. Didn't cost nobody any money. Didn't do anything. Just, But at that moment, you seen something that was missing in South Chicago. That was a great show. And we could do it. We could do it. But we have to have a certain cooperation and feel for what we're doing and work together as in the arts because there's too many things that could divide us but my concern has always been one thing keep the arts alive that's mm -hmm. the most important thing for me is that everything else will work with us but the arts is what's important to me that's why I don't get involved in too many things uh, other than through the arts because that's where the strength is now, if my strength was in another direction, well, I would be in that direction. But mine is what I'm, we're, we're doing now to show that it could be done. And as we come here, you start seeing some of the, like I said, the different styles, the different. So 
again, I welcome our community here in the southeast side to come join us and participate. If our door is open, stop by and you're more than welcome to come see the show and also support what's going on in South Chicago. Like uh, the, the South Chicago Chamber just put together a film thing. They're trying to kick back into the arts. I appreciate what they're doing. But you also have Sky Art, support the Sky Art, the children. Sarah Ward is doing a fantastic job, fantastic job. And it's a very difficult job that she has, but she's accomplishing it. And we gotta be very, very proud of that because our children are gonna benefit from that. That's what we have. We got so many things that are working for us, but we somehow or another have to have more. We have to have more participation. That's the word I would use, participation. Mm -hmm. I think that's the one that I think would need. And who do we want to participate? Our leaders, the bankers, the owners of the stores, the people that live off this community, join us. I would like to see you once in a while. I mean, I would like to see the people who own the stores who own the liquor stores, who own these things, come join us. Get to know the other people in our community. Instead of going home and, and um, leaving within an hour, stay a half hour longer and see your community. See who's buying your things. Look around. Take a walk around your community. No, we don't. I don't think half those people ever walk in their community. Except they grab the car and run to their store. <laughs> don't do that. We don't do that. We walk in this community. We're sharing. We see. That's what we want to show. That's how these paintings came to life because we are painting what we see, what the good, the bad, and that's what we want to share. And that would help us. You don't. Then nobody has to be committed to buy anything from us at all. Just participate and come see what we're doing. That's all. Take part and enjoy it. Exactly. But all of us working together, we're going to solve that problem. We've done. Is there anything we haven't? Discussed no. Okay. Uh, if anything, uh, what, what you'll be seeing new on, on, on the part of uh, Under the Bridge Studios is uh, we're going to continue doing more projects. Now, if anybody has any suggestions or wants to be part of the studio as a fellow artist, musician, poet, writer, feel free to come to us in the door and we will find space for because we need all these things. That, uh, another thing that, I, that before I forget and we close for the night. Like I always so proud. I always told to Kevin, you know what we need? We need a writer. We need somebody to tell the story on what happened in this community. If you're that writer, we're looking for you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, from Under the Bridge Studios. Oh, another question before oh, we wrap okay. it up. You and your daughter are developing a website now for the work, right? Yes. Did you want to say anything about that? Well, well what we're doing is we're going to be developing it very, very soon. Now, now my problem is I am not very web savvy. Mm -hmm. But my daughter, I'm very proud of her. We're going to be working on this project together. And I'm a proud dot father. I'm glad that she's going to take over because I know that her, with her business mind, we're going to go to another level. But I should be concerned, worried about myself. You know what I'm doing? I'm bringing her, the other younger artists that are still struggling to her. So I figured, well, if you're going to be helping me, do one thing more. I'll bring you some of the ones that are already at that one level and you... you, you you know, you represent them too. So what what we're getting ready to do, if it's allowed in the big picture, we will have a, a cyber representative for, for our young artists from our community as, as an outlet, which is basically what we need. And if my daughter gets it to that level, which I don't see why she shouldn't, we benefit. And what we have to be proud of, she's from South Chicago, and she has the South Chicago drive in her. She could be in Dallas, Texas, but she's still from South Chicago. And thanks to the internet, that's possible. Oh, that, yeah, amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you, Ron. Again, thank you very much. And, uh, and I would like to see you join us under the Bridge Studios. And if the door is not open, we'll have some numbers available and just contact us and we will open the door for you. And uh, we was, currently we're going to be having more of an outlet. So we're going to figure something out okay. very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you.